What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Well, members get exclusive content. Hit the bell icon on my channel so that you will receive a notification every time I drop a video. You can go and watch the video, leave a comment, and like the video if you support the content. Let's get right into it. The riot that happened in San Bernardino County Jail. I was involved in it. Many, many people accused me of kicking it off. I, they didn't necessarily accuse me like I had done something wrong, but they gave me credit for kicking it off, but I didn't kick it off. Uh, really, the Southsiders kicked it off by their transgression. First, I was there in Glen Helen, in a county jail in 2012 in San Bernardino County. Glen Helen has dorms. I caught a case in Hesperia, California at my ex-girlfriend's house. And so, since I caught the case out there in Hesperia, they sent me to the county jail out there in San Bernardino, and I was fighting the case. I was fighting the case in Victorville, actually, in, in, in the courthouse, Superior Courthouse in Victorville, 2012. Some nonsense. And there in Glen Helen, the dudes from San Bernardino, that's where they're all from, they sort of respect the dudes from Los Angeles, the, the gang members from Los Angeles, California, considering that Los Angeles, California is the capital of gang banking, the apex. Because of this, they show a certain reverence to dudes from L.A. But, you know, they stand on their own as well. So when I got there to the dorm, naturally, they showed me an abundance of respect. I took over the dorm rather quickly and began to politic and show them ways that we perform there in the Los Angeles County Jail. And ways to protect ourselves because it was going up in Glen Helen as well. These riots that were happening in the Los Angeles County Jail had trickled up to San Bernardino County, or maybe they were just happening on their own. However, they were happening in Glen Helen, riots every day in these dorms. It almost kicked off in the dorm that I was in with the Southsiders over a bunk that we didn't want to get in. And because of this, they have something in Glen Helen that's like, it's not the whole, but they send troubled inmates too. It has cells, about about 10 or 15 cells. And I, I forget the name of the unit. And they had sent me there because they accused me of fomenting violence and the riot. Or, even though the riot didn't kick off. And it wasn't me. <clears throat> I, I was just there. True enough, I was politicking in certain ways just to keep the blacks strong and safe making sure that they had weapons, et cetera, and that we were exercising and all of that. But it wasn't anything against any other race. I just wanted to make sure that we were strong because it was kicking off in every dorm. And I understood that I was in San Bernardino County and I don't necessarily know how shit works out here. So I'm being real careful. They threw me in this unit. Now, my boy Bam, he was a dime move. Nearly my size, just a bit shorter, had long hair, dark-skinned dude. I, he was not from an L.A. gang. He was from a San Bernardino gang, I believe, or I.E. or something like that. But he was a blood, but Bam was strong. I, I can Everything that he, he got involved in in the dorm, he handled the situation perfectly, reminded me perfectly of someone from Los Angeles, a gang member from Los Angeles that takes care of business. This was Bam for sure. He got into it with the police, and they sent him to this unit as well, where I was at. In fact, he had got there before me. <clears throat> now, not long after, they shipped me and Bam out and a few others to the, the county jail in San Bernardino County, something Valley. It's called something Valley. I, I forget the name of the, of the county jail. It has, it has all sales, though. This place is horrible. Very little program, and... The rapport with the police is bad. The police are racist. I'm not just saying that. It's just what it is. San Bernardino, they, they, 
they still just don't get it. They're behind. And I didn't want to be here. <laughs> I, I saw that immediately. But I was there. They shipped us out, me and Bam and a few others. They said to, re to rebalance the power there in Glen Helen. Accused me and Bam of having too much influence. And that we were using this influence to draw ire towards the police. All false, of course. But these are the trumped up charges that they throw upon one that, that they believe has some sort of leadership qualities or some sort of influence. I'm all used to it. So uh, I wasn't perturbed by it at all. I went to the other place, didn't necessarily want to be there, but it is what it is. But this place was horrible. I'm there one day. I've been there two or three days and I'm in my cell. I've been out of my cell one time. The dudes from San Bernardino, they, they, they greeted me. They said, what's up or whatever. Asked me where I was from. Told them I was from LA. A couple of them said that they had heard about me there in Glen Helen. Word travels fast because they're constantly shipping people from Glen Helen to this place here, this, this valley place. And <clears throat> I said, okay, cool. Uh, I'm not here to start any trouble. So I'm in my cell one day working out, doing my burpees. And I saw this black dude out there, had a little afro. He was talking to himself. Clearly he was a J-cat. I can see that immediately. Now, I don't know how the San Bernardino's politic. And if they allow J, or apparently they do allow J-cats here because he's here. But in the LA County Jail, he would not be there being a module that I was on or that I was running. But he was here in San Bernardino County as if everything was good. I don't know how long he had been there in the module. And I don't know uh, to what extent of a J-cat he was. If they just let him be because he wasn't bothering anyone or whatever their reasoning was. I'm not sure. I just got here and been here for a couple of days. But the J-cat is walking around and he's talking to himself in the day room. I don't pay it much mind. I continue my workout. About 30 minutes later, I'm still working out. That's how I do. I hear a bunch of commotion in the day room. So I run to the door. They got the windows there. And I look out and the black J-cat is on the ground. And there's three Mexicans, three Southsiders on him. And they're swinging. And he has his hands up trying to protect his extremities. You know, that's the first thing you do is protect your face. The, the eyes are sensitive. You don't want to get your teeth knocked out. You can hit the brain and the, and the brain begins to bleed. You can get a concussion, etc. So, so most people go to protect their faces. So he's laying down on the ground on his back and he's trying to protect his face. They're having no mercy. They're swinging on the dude. And then one black dude was saying, man, get off of him, get off. The black dude, the J-cat, somehow was out there by himself. And it was about four Southsiders, but only three of them had jumped on him. And I didn't see what happened. I didn't see what happened from the beginning. So now I'm saying, damn, did he attack one of them or what? Because, again, I knew early on that he was a J-cat. He was out there talking to himself. So I didn't know. As I didn't see what it initiated. I didn't know what had happened. But I did know immediately that this was wrong and that they were in violation for putting their hands on him, regardless of what he did, unless he attacked them and I can understand them defending themselves or whatever. Even though it's still going to have to go up because it's two races involved now. So the black dude that's next to me, older black dude from San Bernardino, I don't think he game bang. He yelled out to me, hey, big man. No, bro, dude's a J-cat, man. Dude's a J-cat. You know, they telling the he telling the Southsiders, get off of him, though, man. He a J-cap, but get off of him, though, bro. Y'all already did that. He, he get it now. Get off of him. Like, he get it now. So he like, no, uh, he like, no, uh, uh, OG, big man. Dude's a J-cap, bro. And uh, I said, okay, but what happened, though? Did you see what happened? He said, yeah, but now, by now the Southsiders, they didn't got off of him. The police never ran in there, never hit no alarm, nothing. As, as if they never saw this. They was on him. For a few minutes, it was a, a female right there in the tower. And they was on a, a female officer. And, and the three Southsiders was pummeling upon him for a few minutes. 
And I'm saying, God damn. So the black dude, he's saying, no, man, dude was walking around and Southsider was on the phone. And he was talking to himself kind of loud and speaking out loud or whatever. And the Southsider had told him one of the times that he passed by, he made quiet that shit down, man. You see him on the phone and dude just kept walking and he just kept talking, but he had J-Cat, you know what I'm saying? So he said, man, dude just kept walking. He didn't say nothing back to the Southsider though. And then when he came back around, he was still talking to himself. And the Southsider, he said, the black dude that's explaining what, what he saw, that, that's next door to me says that the Southsider put the phone down. And as the black dude is walking by, still talking, the Southsider just attacked him, basically from the back, and started swinging on him. The other Southsiders, sitting over there on the bench watching TV, joined in the fight. And now they got the black dude on the floor and they pummeling upon him. And he's out there by his lonesome. So, I, so I'm telling the black dude, man, that's not justified though, but I, I'm tired of talking on the tear about it. They did get off of him after the police didn't run in there and went back to watching TV as if nothing happened. But then when they went inside of their cells, and one of the black dudes was yelling out, it was a Damu dude upstairs from me. But he was a strong dude as well. Bam, the Damu dude that I came on a bus with, he's next door in a different section. But he's in the same building with me in the same unit, but he, he, he's in a different section. So <clears throat> the Damu upstairs, he yelling out like, man, hell no, that's some bullshit. It's another Damu there with some braids, a, a chubby dude, but he's strong and stocky. And so he yelling out, no, nah, man, that's fucked up, man. Y'all gonna do him like that. And so one of the Southsiders yelled out the door like, man, he a J-Cat, man, he was talking. And so another Southsider said, hey, homie, don't yell out the door, homie. It is what it is, homie. Fuck that, homie. It is what it is. Fuck it. It already happened, homie. So I said, oh, this is the tough guy right here. I said, okay, bet. So the, the Damu upstairs, he threw a kite over to me. He threw his line over, and he shot me a kite before I can even say anything. He got at me. He said, bro, look, I already know about you, already heard about you, already know you're going to want to go up. And I ain't finna sit here and say he was a J-Cat and make myself look soft and put my name in that. Uh, I know you want to go up, so it's all good, let's go up. I shot him back a kite. I asked him, did he have any weapons? He said he did have one. I said, okay, cool. What's up with the rest of the blacks that's right here in the section? Again, I just got here. I've been there a couple of days. You're like, man, they all right, man, but... You know what I'm saying? A couple of them suspect. I'm asking about the, the blacks in the other section. It's the same sort of situation. So I said, okay. Now, there, one tier, I believe it was, or half the tier goes to the yard, another half goes to day room. So the next day, we had yard. It's only like five blacks and five Southsiders. And the rest were in the day room. Now, I didn't want to send, I wanted to send word to all the blacks that we finna respond and go up. But I was scared because I didn't want them or someone to leak this to the police. They come and do this investigation, lock us down, come get me again, talk about I got all this influence and I'm trying to start a ride or whatever, and we can never get back to these dudes. We can, we can never get our get back. So I didn't want to keep them in the dark either. So there was a quandary that I was in. However, I decided I was going to wait to the last minute to let the blacks know in the other sections. But the blacks in my section, I said, y'all be ready. When we come out to the yard, I knew I had yard. My section had yard or my tier or whatever. When we come out to the yard, we're going to go up. Bring some weapons out just because they may have some, bro. I, I, I suspect that they know there's going to be a response unless they're used to just getting off on you guys out here in San Bernardino and not expecting a response and never getting one, but that's not gonna happen. So we went out to the yard, <clears throat> and there was an older South Sider out there, not too old, wasn't in the wheelchair, not, maybe in his 50s. And I'd already had a kite prepared, and they had this light-skinned black dude from San Bernardino, and his celly, the, the, both of them were trustees, and they both had Jews. And so they, they used, used to run around a module to different sections. So I had the kite, and I shot the kite, I gave the kite to the trustee and told him, take this to BAM. In the kite, I explained everything to BAM. What we're about to do, what happened in there, and to let the blacks in the other sessions know what's going on. 
I'm going to give y'all a few minutes to spread word. I wanted to wait till the last till we got to the yard before I even spread word. Because I want this to go down. So we all out there, and no matter what, we finna get this in. So after a few minutes, after I gave them time, I told the blacks over there, uh, out there on the yard, we congregated just for a minute. The South Siders are up there, are out there on the yard, and they got their backs against the wall. Apparently, already knowing what's coming. And I told the blacks, the older South Sider, don't touch him. The one that's in his 50s, unless, because he may have a knife and try to stab one of us. So unless he comes at one of us and tries to attack one of us, we have to defend ourselves. Other than that, if he just stays over there and he's not trying to get involved because he's older, bro, then don't touch him. That's my politics. That's how I get out. That's how it's supposed to be with everyone in every race. It's not always like that. But that's like that with me. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to maintain my level of morality regardless of the situation. And so it kicked off. We attacked them, bro, right there. The Southsiders, they were fighting back. They were, they were swinging back. Now, the one Damu dude that sent me the kite over the tier, he did have a little weapon. I had a little sum too. I didn't even have to use my weapon, though, because the Southsiders, they were really outmatched out there, bro. Now, the Damu, he did, he did pull out his weapon because he thought a Southsider had one. That's what he told me later. So he did pull it out, and he swung it, and he hit the Southsider in the arm with the weapon, but that was it. Once he realized the South Sider wasn't trying to swing back with the weapon, he put the weapon back up, and we just really went fist to cuss. Nobody touched the older South Sider, but now it then kicked off in every section in the module. The police are running in. You can see him going to every section. Bam, come to find out later, he kicked it off in his section, and in my section, the, the Damu with the braids, the, the chunky one, when he first came out, they said he socked the, the skinny South Sider that was yelling out the door. Cause he was right next door to him. He hit him in the eye. The dude came back with a big patch around his eye. When he took it off a couple days later, his eye was closed and it was swollen bad. I felt bad for him. I swear, because I, 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 I thought that his eye was going to be damaged for the rest of his life. That's how bad it was. And in the other sections, there was a little bit of, of, of weapons involved. No one left out on a stretcher. A couple of people got poked. And uh, in Bam's section, there were weapons used, and a couple of people got poked. And Bam being a strong dude, I know what happened in that situation. But now, the two dudes that were trustees that sent the kite around, they didn't, they didn't know what was in the kite. One of them ran, and the other one just got against the wall and stood there inside of the section and bam section and just left bam and a couple other blacks to really handle it on their own when i hollered at the dude the light-skinned one that ran he said that he didn't run that he swung and that his celly was the one that stayed against the wall but his celly was injured and basically he told me it is what it is man that's how it is out here everybody don't have to get involved i said no i've never heard that that makes no sense no you all have to get involved it's a race on race thing bro so I told, I shot Bam a kite. We're politicking over the kites. And I told Bam, we're going to have to get both of these dudes. They got to go. They didn't get involved. Bam, of course, being a strong man and strong leader that he is, he immediately agreed and said, let's get these dudes. And we began to devise a plan to attack these suckers. And in part two, I'll explain exactly what happened. But the situation with the Southsiders was actually resolved right then and there. They came and talked to me and explained what happened. And I explained that I couldn't let that go. Them attacking my people. I understand that he was a J-Cat, but three of y'all pummeled upon him. And so it had to kick off. They understood that, respected that, and that was really the end of it. But now what to do with these two black dudes that did not involve themselves? Dereliction of duty had some form. I'll bring you that in part two. Stay free, people!